Hey, listen up. We got another episode of Wise Cracks. Featuring the crack man himself, Bill Krakenberger. And our co-host, John Orlando. Straight from Las Vegas. Wise Cracks is your ticket inside the world of sports betting. With tips, picks, special guests, and more. Only on WSN.com. What's up, Wise Cracks Nation? We are back. John Orlando here from Las Vegas, and I've got Mr. Bill Krakenberger back in Las Vegas, back with the brick backdrop in the house. I like it. Welcome yeah. back. We're back. I'm going to be bouncing back and forth, though, between New Jersey and, and Las Vegas all football season. So hey, you're a traveling back. man. That's okay. Yeah. You're a traveling man. But however, we can, it's good. We can film from anywhere. I love it. So we're good. How was Thanksgiving? I, I, I had a record. I'm not kidding you. If there was 12 slices in the pumpkin pie, I'm not kidding you. I think I had nine of them. That's, wow. a, true, yeah, that's no. a real number over uh, two days, two days of yeah. just insanity. Not, not, you know, I, I, I'm still under the, and I know I'm stubborn. I'm still under the uh, non-celebrating, a uh, non-celebratory kind of mood for, for holidays uh, w- without my mom. I'm stubborn. I'm sorry. That was a very, no, you don't have to be year. sorry. You very don't have to be sorry for my mom. So I, I try to, uh, listen, I, I, I'll have it. And, uh, I'm going to actually have a little get together with my wife at a dinner table tomorrow night. We're going to make some stuff that we normally would have made Thanksgiving. She knew I was kind of running around. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's not what it was, but listen, I'm glad everyone else had a great Thanksgiving. And, and, uh, I have some really warm, fond memories that, uh, for 50 years straight that I wouldn't change and for anything. So great. That's awesome, man. Um, Before we talk football, and there is a lot of football to talk, Mike Tyson stepped in the ring on Saturday night against Roy Jones Jr. Did you watch the fight? I did. And, you know, um, I'll tell you, when this, the the line, when when it was talked about first, this line came out at Tyson minus around 240, and lots of the sports books had it. By the time it came to fight night, uh, only DraftKings that I know of, John, unless you know someone else that had this. I don't know anyone else that had a line on this fight. Do you? Yeah, I don't think so. I think because originally, you know, they had said there's no judges, no winner will be declared. Yeah. And I think that was per the athletic commission yeah. wanted that. They had a lot of funky rules with this. I think, you know, right. No knockouts were supposedly allowed. Any major cuts, the fight was going to be stopped. Um, and, uh, yeah, I only saw a couple of uh, sites that put it up. I didn't see if anyone put up a draw. D- did you? They did did. You? Oh, yeah. What were the odds on the draw? Kings put up a draw at 8-1. to one. So it was a three-way line, like minus 200, draw 8-1. to one. Or they, you could just bet the draw. Like I think it was 8-1 to one I seen. because I, I seen it at DraftKings. We can actually get right on the DraftKings app and look at all the lines here from Las Vegas. You don't even have to have an account. So, uh, but, but Tell me you bet the draw. Did you? No, I, I didn't bet the fight at all. No. We, I'll tell you. I don't really know. I think that my own opinion and DraftKings isn't going, going to like this. I think they really should have refunded everybody. I think they should have gave a courtesy refund to anyone that bet that fight. It would have been good sportsmanship like points bet does that once in a while. That's um, interesting. Uh, FanDuel does that once in a while. If they didn't like something they've seen, they'll give money back. Like um, it's, it's a good marketing tool and it's really, as long as it's low exposure. Yeah. What you are know. your thoughts on, and then we'll move on to football, but what are your thoughts on this legends league that I, I, I guess Mike Tyson is forming where it's, we might see more of that. Is it good for boxing? Is it bad for boxing? I, my thought is I kind of applaud Anyone over the age of 50 that can make millions of dollars in, a, in an athletic competition, uh, you know, America, go for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, Evander Holyfield said he's ready to come back too and fight any one of them. And he could definitely use the check also. Here's yeah. That went through three, 300 plus million dollars. Uh, so, uh, and, and you know, if you look up his net worth, it's less than, ha- it's le- less than half a million dollars now. So, uh, what does would, that make you think when what, what pops in your mind when that happens? Do you feel Tom sorry for them? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, John. What do no, we- no, go ahead. Like, do you, do you feel sorry for the guys or do, do you, is it shame on them for blowing through it? Or is it, is it one of those things where, like, from their upbringing, from where they came from, they just never had the proper resources around them to help them? And the resources you end up having behind you. Um, when you do arrive to those kind of numbers um, coming from where they came from, the resources you have are leeches leeching off of you, right? It's you don't have people that are protecting you. Yeah. You know, uh, 
I'll tell you, I feel bad for them because I can understand it a little bit, believe it or not. I have to admit, I'm a street kid that I don't know how to handle money. I, I don't. If I want something, I'm not me. I'm not really good on spending money on myself. But like if if my wife or my friends and I, I flew three of my friends back with us. And just to give you a perfect example, like I flew back from Jersey and I, 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 I'm not going to sit in first class alone. I, I put them right in first class with me. I'm just, but I'm, you know, it's just stupid. We're only flying back five hours on a plane. Why don't I got to spend two grand on airfares? But I don't care. I just did it because I don't have no valuable mo of money. And I hope that enough, I hope my income stream doesn't slow down or stop. This is something where I can't age and out and, and, and outgrow it. Uh, I can still always make money in bet betting sports. And I think it's always going to be here. And it's just uh, my, my life is just enjoy life while you're here. And I'm sure that's what a lot of these guys did too, but they had a lot of guys stealing from them too. They had promoters and, uh, you know, uh, investment guys that were around them and even friends that would, you know, leech onto them, like you said, just for money. So I kind of feel bad for those guys. And uh, it's nice. I guess they put a couple bucks in their pocket now. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So uh, crack normally after we do our little quick catch up, I would ask you how your week went last week. Are you winning? And before the camera started rolling this morning, uh, you shared with uh, a handful of us here on the on the show. Uh, I won't say the number. Don't worry. Uh, but you, you, you showed me a number of how you're doing. Uh, this actually, that was I think just last week. Not even this season. What you showed me for last week. Listen, what that is unbelievable. Like I knew you. I knew you win. <laughs> but oh my god, I, yeah. should I not have brought this up right now? I'm sorry. But <laughs> that's on certain type of wagers. You know, I'm all, I'm showing you a spreadsheet from certain type of wagers that you can only get. In certain jurisdictions. So, uh, yeah, no, it, 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 every week is, uh, has been good. Listen, this football season has been unbelievable. I can never expect a football season like this season. So we have, uh, crushed the NFL. Uh, we have, which is just something I really didn't bet too much on. I mean, I do bet NFL totals, which uh, actually the totals actually lost this past week, but we do bet on proposition bets. They've always been good. And, yeah, I'm, I'm having a good season. I'm really happy with it. Basketball, we're starting a little bit slower in basketball season. You know, with this COVID and not knowing the lineups, new, normally you'll know the lineups the night before the game. They're not right. even announcing lineups sometimes right up until tip-off. So Yeah, and it's changing minute by minute, literally. Yes. You can see what's just happening in football. You can see what's happening in, you know, that we're trying to get this Pittsburgh-Baltimore game in so they don't have to have an extra week added to the schedule or something. It's, it's very, very – uh interesting year but yes it's been been good been real profitable a little later in the show we're gonna have a fantastic guest uh today uh who, who'd you bring uh for us today oh we have the legend jimmy vaccaro uh 40 year uh storied career in this business and in the sports betting business he's on the other side of the counter now of course and he's worked for some of the best guys in the world michael gone steve Wynn. uh he's been down in the bahamas he ran the atlantis for a while sports book uh, this guy, he worked for Leroy's and Lucky's downtown and, and, uh, he went out to Pittsburgh recently and was working out in Pittsburgh. He tried it and he, uh, he left Vegas. He came back to Vegas and he's back at the South point again, 75 years young. And, uh, we're, we're really happy to have him really fortunate. Yeah. So we'll be talking to him a little later in the show, but first let's talk about, uh, my picks from last week. Uh, not that, not the greatest week for me. Uh, yeah. My Cowboys let me down. Boy, did they let me down. Uh, and Tom Brady almost pulled it off. He almost pulled off the incredible uh, upset. Uh, what would you think of that Chiefs game? That first quarter, um, that first quarter of that game, you know, it's funny. I, I love betting sometimes against these quarterbacks. And, <laughs> oh, boy, I bet against Mahomes again. I had up <laughs> two and a half touchdowns. Because it's an inflated number. People come to Vegas, they 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 pump up the number. They're not they're not betting under Mahomes. They're betting over. So I I I lost a couple grand on under Mahomes two and a half touchdowns. But at least I lost it fast. It was over in the first ten minutes. He had three touchdowns. So seeing that game and seeing that comeback though shows me that uh, either Tampa Bay. I didn't watch the game though, John. So you'll know more than me. Either Tampa Bay is a uh, uh, has a lot of heart or. Or, and this is contrarily, uh, Kansas City almost blew a game there because they were too comfortable. Or yeah. uh, maybe they're not the big powerhouse I thought they were. You know, they, they almost lost to the Raiders the week before. They did lose to the Raiders one, 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 earlier in the season. 
you know, what, what do you think about that, John? Are they, I'm sure you watched the game, right? I did. Yeah. I think it might be both. If I think it's both of those things. I think maybe they took their foot off the gas a little bit. And then also the, you know, it's still Tom Brady. It's the Brady factor, right? You know, I, um, my buddy, again, Adam Lieberman, he sent me a text, you know, uh, after the first quarter, you know, the chiefs, it was a blowout, right? Uh, the chiefs were crushing them. And I said, uh, did, do I need to remind you about the Patriots and Falcons Super Bowl? There's a lot of game left. Don't count out Tom Brady. Wow. Uh, you know, landed right on the number two. Landed on three. Yeah. No one really. Should, I, I, listen, if you follow my rules, no one's supposed to lose this game. The most you're the, that worst, you're supposed to push this game. You know, when when you're laying three and a half on a game, you're supposed to buy it down to the three. Um, you know, I understand it's a little bit more juice, but three is the number one number in the NFL that comes out. Uh, so, you know, you're really, and of course, if, if you had the other side of the game, you're supposed to have the hook and, and you're supposed to win. So, yeah, I mean, Hill and Mahomes connected on seven receptions for 203 yards and two touchdowns in the first quarter. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's crazy. Crazy. That's only happened uh, three times, I guess, in 30 seasons. And Hill ended up with like 261 yards and three touchdowns. Unbelievable. Uh, like you said, Chiefs, yeah. Chiefs pulled out by three. It's crazy. Hey, John, what, let, let's let's touch on one more thing before we get into your picks and stuff. Yeah. What about Monday night's game where the Eagles, uh, oh miracle, the, the miracle there uh, at the link over there when they're throwing the ball and bouncing off the miracle, Hail Mary, Hail Mary bouncing off one guy, the other guy, uh, it might have been a tight end. That was, I don't know who called yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was I mean, end. and crazy. He was surrounded by the wrong color jerseys. <laughs> surrounded and ends up with the football. But, yeah, yeah. That was a, a miracle. And then they went for the two-point conversion, which this was a billion dollars plus in swing of people's bets all around the world. This was an amazing night. It just goes to show you anything can happen. This team looked like dogs the whole game. How can it be possible that they covered this game? It's unbelievable. And by the way, this game opened up at five, went to five and a half. Even the day before the game, went to six, six and a half, closed six. And there was a couple sevens actually uh, for a couple minutes. So this game landed right in the middle on the six. And uh, because they went for the two point conversion at the end, when people were just like, what? You're down by 14. Why are you going for a two-point conversion? But there is analytics that show that you should go for a two-point conversion in that situation, believe it or not. There's analytics, and I know Peterson is part of that analytics, but there is uh, the, the coach there. But there is there is other teams that also do that too, other coaches. They just feel, hey, the analytics, they go for the two-point conversion. You're down by six. Now you get another touchdown, especially if you're on the road. But they were, they were home, though. But uh, situationally, though, that you're supposed to do that. I don't subscribe to that, actually. I'm like, right. what are you doing? And, and do you think that is really why they do it? Or do you think that there is other reasons? I won't. No, uh, no. I mean, no yeah, way, right? No listen, way? You listen, you listen to the, the Monday Night Football announcers. They don't know anything. They're saying, oh, well, Vegas, that just changed Vegas a little. They know the spread on the game. But they don't, they, they, you know, if they try to make it sound like there's a fix, let's just get to the right word or something like that. That's not happening in the NFL. This is, I know that. This There's no analytics. reason, right? There's just no reason. This is this is from the analytics departments of of these teams that all have a analytics guys that work for each team. Now there is some of them that believe in this and, and and subscribe to this formula of going for the two in that situation. I've seen it throughout the season, by the way. This isn't the first time it happened. So it just it just so happened that it happened on a prime time game where everyone's eyes was on it. Number one Monday Night Football. So uh, I understand why people question it, but. And uh, we would be out of our minds not to mention that the, the Denver Broncos uh, <laughs> played a game uh, this week starting their wide receiver at quarterback, uh, Kendall Hinton. Uh, and he completed one. He was one for 13 uh, against the Saints. Uh, it's crazy times we're, we're living crazy. in, right? The line, you know, when it, when it was taken off the board, it was a six point line. Then it went to 13. And the wise guys jumped right on it. I know Circus Sports out here in Vegas. I know they put up 13, 13 and a half. Even the 14, the wise guys laid. It closed 17 and uh, never really had a chance uh, if you were betting the dog there. They got the money. Hard to believe that. Looking at it now, you always can be the Monday morning quarterback and say, wow, why didn't I bet more money on that? You know, you know that there's uh, no quarterback on the other side. And look, look what happened. The guy completed one pass, I think. So yeah. Do you think they sh should they just cancel a game like that? Or I, I don't I, want them to cancel any. I need more betting opportunities. I don't ever. I want them to, to, you know, I want them to book high school football. I don't care. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and are you? What are your thoughts on the expanded uh, playoff format now? Fourteen teams will go to the postseason. Does that change things in your world at all? Oh yeah. The more, the better for me. It's more betting opportunities. You know, each one of these playoff games, they have much more props out there. So I need games with a lot of props to choose from because uh, we hit our highest percentage uh, really on prop games. So, yep. Now, uh, I'd like to remind everybody to head over to WSN.com and get all of the latest picks, uh, spreads, all the info you need, the sign-up bonuses. Crack, you're on WSN.com religiously before we start every single show. Before we start every show, I don't know if people realize that. That's where the crack man is. He's on WSN.com. Are you I not? You said before uh, we, we got on air, so let me go there again and see if anything else is new, new that's up there. There's a big article on talking about um, – uh, the sports betting coming to Michigan and, and Detroit. And this is going to be a big thing for them. So there's articles on everything there. WSN, please check it out. Uh, listen, there's probably nowhere that I know of that has more articles on just the gaming industry alone, but then just the sports side of it, not even sports betting, the sports side of it, nowhere else to go. Check out WSN for sure. And while you're at it, check out the Crack Wins app. You know I got to bring it up every single week because it is the sports betting Bible. If you are betting on sports, you absolutely need to check out the Crack Wins app. He's got everything you need over there. And Crack, uh, college basketball underway. That's kind of your sweet spot, is it not? Yeah, no, college basketball is underway. Like I said earlier, though, it's uh, haven't really put out a lot of bets there. I haven't made a lot of bets in college basketball yet. Uh, there's just so much uh, as way, as, you know, in the way of uh, knowing the lineups, which is a real key component, major component of, of winning. So uh, we, we're starting out a little bit slow, but we're getting used to it here. We're going to, we're going to uh, get used to this new way of handicapping games. So yeah, I'm sure we're only, you know, we're less than a week in. So uh, it should be fun though. We should have a good season. And, and uh, again, you, you know, you subscribe to the crack wins app. We, uh, we give you winners though. That's in the end, you're going to make money. I look, look what we've done since last football season started, since we opened the app. Uh, amazing. Amazing. Like literally almost 200 units of, of profit. So I uh, look forward to keep that, that pace up. And uh, I, I enjoy helping people with the articles I have on there and the free information on bankroll management and strategies. And uh, every week we, we review the games that we had every week. I'm an open book. I'm very transparent. I'm not like every other place. Not many places I can name that, that are transparent like I am. I, I'm going to let you know if I have losing weeks. I'm going to talk about it. Winning weeks, of course, like I said, overall, we, we, we've destroyed them. So, uh, you know, I love these guys that always talk about, oh, what we've done the last week or what we've done the last four games are, you know, guys that want to use trends. You know, over the last 12 years, this team is 28 and 17. You know, it's a total different teams now, but that 28 and 17, <laughs> it does work. It wants to suck you in. It wants to get you in there. So, right. We don't do things that way. I'm, I'm, I'm an open book. I'm legit. And that is what everybody loves about you, Crack Man, that you are an open book. So check out the Crack Wins app. It's on Apple. It's on Google Play. Check it out today. And uh, coming up now, it's that time. We've, uh, we sat down with a legend. Did we not? A Las Vegas sports betting legend earlier today. Absolutely. Here's how it went. Check it out. Hey, guys, we have a legendary guest today. Jimmy Vaccaro was handpicked by Steve Wynn in 1989 to open the Mirage, which basically changed the Las Vegas Strip forever. Jim, thanks for joining us. And let me introduce you to my co-host, John Orlando, whose father is uh, Tony Orlando, which performs over at the South Point all the time. And, wow. Uh, yeah, so you, you gotta, you, I'm sure you know who Tony is, of course. Right. Can you get me a date with one of the three Dawns? <laughs> I'll work on that. I'll work on that. <laughs> All right. Good. How you been? I'm good. I'm good. It's an honor to talk to you today. Cool. cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us, Jim. I'll get right into the questions because we have about okay. six of them for you. Um, so, so, Jim, I, I don't even know the answers to a couple of these. So these are some, some questions I came up with. But, you know, we, we know, uh, at least I know you grew up back in Pennsylvania. I was just wondering what it was to grow up in, in Pennsylvania as a kid. Uh, you know, such a blue collar. My father, by the way, people don't notice. My father was a country farmer from Ohio. And my mother's Italian mm -hmm. from the Bronx. I'm amazing they met each other. And, and But there was gambling <laughs> going on back in Ohio when he was a kid, too. So sure. I just want to know. Uh, how did you get introduced to this? Was it like Steubenville, Youngstown, or Pittsburgh, all the same kind of places, or what? 
Yeah, obviously, Bill, you know, we come from the same type of background with our parents way back when. I was very fortunate uh, growing up uh, on the East Coast at that time. And I'll tell you why quickly. It's simply, you know, obviously business was good. Uh, my dad worked in a steel mill like millions of other people. You worked in the steel mill. You worked at, you know, construction. Uh, you worked in a factory. But everybody had a little bit of money. So there was always something going on. I understood what 11 to 10 meant when I was about 10 or 11 years old. I didn't bet it, but I understood stood it. So just being around there, I can still see Manuel coming around in the morning with Al Donatelli, you know, taking the numbers, betting 25 cents on a number. Then Erwin Urich, you know, getting invited to his house with my brother, and he was a medium-sized bookmaker, and when he booked $300 a game, I thought it was like Jim Toback, you know, betting, you know, $100 million a game. So I grew up, I grew up around it, and I was I was very fortunate to be a part of that young, youngster, obviously, being introduced. And then all the towns that you mentioned, Youngstown, Stuba, Poland, Ohio, you know, Weirton, West Virginia, uh, they were on board too, as, as I'm sure you can uh, give me a million little names back there where, where you was. I can remember walking into Joe Nagaro's Common News in Braddock, Pennsylvania, where you walked in the front and you could buy the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. You went through a door and it was like a, a viewing of the sting. Remember the sting with the, the blackboard on the wall and everybody else, you know, in there going around. So I was fortunate. I never had a job uh, that I would bounce around between, you know, Las Vegas and, and Trafford, Pennsylvania for a few years. And one, one year, my, my friend says, what the hell? Why don't you just move out there? So I moved out and obviously it, it turned out relatively well for me, but at the bottom line is like growing up around that culture. And I'm Bill, I'm sure you can chime in also. It was different. It was unique. And it was really, really a good time, especially for a youngster like me who absolutely enjoyed being around it and being a part of it. Oh, yeah. No, like I always say, it's like a rite of passage for me in the Bronx. We had a little corner candy store, and it was just the same thing, the chalkboard, everything else. I mean, we used to bet, bet on numbers when we were a kid at the, at the racetrack, right. the, the handle and stuff. It was That was the number before the, the, the New York lottery came out. Mm -hmm. But so you're, right. you're, you're saying back then, though, now was sports betting, did, did, did it like, I don't want to say originate, but how does sports betting come out of a place like, uh, back where you were in Trafford and Pittsburgh, and what, was it because it was in the, it was in Nevada already, or, or do you think maybe you even kind of originated back then a little bit? Was it, or, or was it just uh, well this. Uh well, to some degree, but it was just the culture of the world changing. It, it obviously has been gambling uh, since the beginning of time, but every 30 or 40 years, it seemed to like inch up or something new would come about. And so you had to be a part of that if you wanted to stay in the race. So that basically was it. It was always there. But as I grew older, there were more things that you saw and more changes that you saw. So basically going back to when I was a kid, you know, if you bet uh, it, there was no, there was no money lines, there was no teasers. There was no, none of that. It was simply, the 11 to 10 straight bets and maybe a parlay or two. Uh, and then the parlay cards. Now we called them parlay cards back there, uh, you know, because uh, obviously, you know, that was a big deal. And remember with the parlay cards back as a kid, as I gingerly remember the reason I never won anything was let's say a game was picked. Well, it was minus three, both sides ties lose. So I think you could see that the hold on those, those type of cards was about 90%, but it didn't matter. <laughs> you wanted to have a little ticket in your hand. So uh, I grew up around it and understood the good, bad, and indifferent, but, you know, who was I to say to change the industry? But it, it simply grew and grew and grew. But, yes, it was a part of growing up, and I truly, truly enjoyed it every wow. freaking minute of it. Oh, yeah. I had to come out to Vegas. When you come out to Vegas, did you have a job lined up or you just took a shot? I mean, what did you do with when you first came here? Well, first of all, you know, going way back with Chris Andrews, Chris, the director of the sports at the uh, at the South Point now. How about this? Uh, Chris used to work for me. Now I work for him. You know, so things do <laughs> things have changed. But going way back to the Pittsburgh area, now his uncle was Jack Franzi. And so obviously I got to know Jack well over 50 years ago with, with Chris. So uh, I, I would come to Las Vegas two or three times a year. Here's a quick story. Like maybe the attraction was in 1964, and I'm not bending any, any exaggerations, Bill. I, I I got three of my friends. I said, I got to see Las Vegas. I was 18 years old. So we piled into my 1956 Chevy and drove from Trafford, Pennsylvania to Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, when we got here, I was amazed. I do remember this. We went to the uh, Golden Nugget downtown, got thrown out because we were so young. Went to Binion's, got our ass thrown out of there. They all said, I quit. I'm not doing it anymore. I went back to the Gold Nugget. And I walked around for quite a while. I enjoyed it so much. And then my friends from Youngstown moved out about uh, about 
uh, about eight or nine years later. Then I used to come out, get broke, go home, get the money, come back out, get broke, and go home. Then one uh, one day, my friend Chris. Chris Seppi said, why the hell don't you just move out here? I said, you know what? I want to see the inside out. So I went home. God bless Margaret Barcaro, my mother. She got me $130 for a plane ticket. And my brother drove me to the airport. And and when I came, I stayed with my friend Chris for a while. Then I said, you know, I got to go to dealer school and, and then get a job from the inside. So basically, my first job was with Michael gone in 1975. So it was Going on 46 years, and I knew Michael. But that, yes, the uh, the short answer from a long thing, Bill, was simply I wanted to come and look from the inside out. And uh, uh, I dealt 21 at the Royal Inn, Michael's first casino, for about a year. Then he opened up the sports book, and my uh, my my great phrase of all time was like Michael looked at me and says that Do you know how to run a sports book? And I said No. And he said Good. Neither do I. So then we went downstairs and opened up the little thing. And then actually, then you go to the Barbary Coast. The Barbary Coast was an absolute skyrocket. Then I opened up uh, Kerkorian's place across the street. Yeah, then Steve went basically, yeah, he did change a lot of things because uh, obviously uh, I can remember uh, being a part of the designers when they when they uh, set out to make the sports book at the Mirage, and uh, things were quite different then, but uh, I enjoyed it. And yes, I played lucky because when I first hit all these places, Bill, remember, there was no sports books in the hotels, just the Harry Gordon Churchill Down or the Santa Anita, whatever stuff like that. So uh, I hit at, right at the right time, proved myself a little bit, then as I say, the rest is history. That's great. John, you got some question for Jimmy? Yeah, I do. That man, I could listen to this all day long. This is just oh, gold. Uh, yeah, Jim, I got a c- couple questions. Uh, one is so on. A, let's say when Monday hits, I always call my buddies and we recap whether we won or lost. If we won, you know, we talk about how we crushed the books and and things like that. <laughs> on the other side of the table, do you ever have or did you ever have conversations like that with Michael Gone or Steve Wynn, like on a Monday and go, "Wow, did we smack them this weekend?" No, not really. Again, I was fortunate. And if you remember at that time, uh, obviously Michael gone with his father, the legacy, the great Jackie gone there. So there was a lineage there for, from, from when Michael was a kid back in Omaha, Nebraska. But I never had a problem with the winning or losing. Now, actually, I didn't lose. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, it was a Monday. And some reason, I was over the Gold Coast. And I was running the Mirage at the time. I was eating lunch uh, with a bunch of friends over there. And Jackie gone showed up. That's Michael Gaughan's father. And uh, all the favorites had shown on the Sunday. So I never forget him walking by me. He said, uh, "How'd it go, kid?" I said, "Wow, Jackie, we lost a million four. You know what his answer was? Here was his answer. Well, it's better than losing a million eight. And I said, "Yeah, I guess you're right." <laughs> you know? So whatever. It is. So I never got a call. Uh, and that day that I lose a million four, I was at the Mirage. The phone never even rang because here we go again. But this is a different time, a different place. We're going back well over 30 years. Uh, I never received a phone call from Steve Wentz saying, what the freak did you happen back there? Because it was a two-way street with everybody. There were days where we won four or 500000 and the phone didn't ring either. That's the way I've always played it, and that's the way that I think people should play it. You know, if you're in, in business, you do what you can or whatever, but they, you don't get too excited if you get your ass kicked, and you really don't get too excited uh, if you go good. Now, everybody's been around town, though. The last month uh, for the books has been relatively well, but me and Chris don't talk about it. We just know it's another day behind us and, and go forward. And, and Chris, obviously, is as good as it gets. I landed in a soft pillow when Michael asked me to come back and uh, and help out. This school. Can you believe going on eight years? And then when Chris joined in, it's close to five years now. And it's very simple. Uh, I give Chris my opinion. He asks me questions now and then, and I do what I can for him. But he is the boss. You know, whatever he says, you know, we follow the rules and instructions. But it's quite different than it was even going back a short 30 years ago. But uh, uh, I like the metamorphosis. I like it. There are some things that I enjoy with the change. And there are a lot of things that I don't enjoy with the change. But I can't change the world. I can only do what Chris asked me to do and, uh, and go from there. That's great stuff. That's great stuff. My, my last question for you, uh, you kind of uh, segued it for me. So, you know, there's been a lot of change over the years. As you're talking to us right now, you're on a you're on a nice old school flip phone, just like my dad still uses. And like <laughs> right. Dana White, president of the UFC, uh, UFC still rocks a flip phone. But now you can make bets with your iPhone, with your smartphone, with your, you know, with your Galaxy phone. What are your thoughts on the, the where we're at today and where the future of sports betting is going and how easy it is to make bets on your phone? And what are your thoughts on all that? 
Well, well, first of all, quickly, uh, again, I saw a big change from the early 80s on. You know, you know, I'll go back 40 years, 35 years at least. There were some people who came from Washington, D.C., talking about, you know, betting all over the country. I'll never forget it. The meeting was at the Jockey Club. And this young lady was there who printed out or showed everything of why it could benefit everybody, you know, if, if we went nationwide. I'm talking 30-some years ago. Wow. And I said, you know, it's not a bad idea. But then when you bring it to the owners of the hotel – the other thing was, well, Jimmy, you know, they, you know I'm, I'm talking about, you know, I'm generalizing there, but uh, with Michael Gaughan even saying at the time, he says, hey, kid, he says, listen, if we had uh, phone betting across the state lines and all the states, he said, you know, why would they come to Las Vegas? So the brick and mortars guys. And I can see why they didn't want that to happen way back when, because that would mean less people would come to Las Vegas to make their bets, which made a lot of sense. But me as a young whippersnapper, I said, you know, I, I wanted to do that. So uh, that did not happen. And then from that particular point, then we obviously went and then, uh, you know, then the phones came in. And now you figured it out when you were an owner. If you didn't have the phone after, if you wanted to be really stubborn, would that be okay? Because there'd be a lot of people who just simply, you know, need that extra half hour a day to make that bet. You take the kids to school, you take your wife to work. Uh, so the phones is the only way you can make your bet. So we had to obviously placate it down. Now, there's a different way of doing things on the phone as opposed to the brick and mortar. So that all comes from way upstairs. Remember, there are the people who own the place and uh, they still want people to come into their sports book. So to answer your question shortly, yeah, I I enjoyed the phones way back when because I knew real quick on who was doing what and, and how much they were doing it for. So I enjoyed it, but that was just that I was just my job for the book there. But the people on the place were looking out for the entire entire. You know, uh, it, it comes down now. It's almost fifty fifty phone activity and uh, counter activity. So as you can see, and another big move which I was, again, I'm not just trying to tell you people that I'm the genius or whatever, but I remember just a few years ago saying, these kiosks are the wave of the future. Same thing. Do you yeah. really want people coming to the counter or whatever? So kiosks are invaluable now, and you'll see more and more. There are places across the country that just have kiosks in their sports book. No live people, but I'm rambling, but uh, that's what I think of the whole thing. No, that's great. Great. Hey, Jim, you mentioned uh, Michael Gaughan, the owner of the South Point. He's a very mm -hmm. special person in the gaming community. I would even consider him like the last of the Mohicans like yourself. I mean, guys that know what customer service is all about, running around, walking around the place, you know, meeting people, saying hello. That really must be special working for a guy like him. I mean, you're, you're, you're so lucky to like, work for a guy like him. And you said he's still the same, though, right? He still walks around the place. And no doubt. Yeah. Well, I'll give you the quick story. Obviously, what I do a lot of, Bill, which obviously, oh, I'm, I hate to use this silly word, like behind the scenes type of thing. Uh, I've been friends with, with uh, Brent Musburger for well over 30 years. When Brent used to come to the Mirage, he was mystified, and he loved seeing all this big action, whatever. And so I introduced him to some of the, what you would call the big guys who played in the business. He was completely taken by it. So I grew to be, have a friendship with him for well over 30 years. Then going on five years ago, and he was doing one of the games out here, I guess one of those bowl game he would always come and visit and we talked about you know what are you gonna do later Billy, uh brent it's a lot i'd like to do a radio show with G the gamma i said you know we we laughed whatever uh, i saw him uh, maybe six months later brought up the same thing again then he said let me call let me tell my nephew to give you a call that was brian musburger the one who does all the work for the shows and uh, so he called me i said listen uh, how, you know, make out a, a little list of, and I'll bring it to people and then we can go from there, see even if it's workable. And then uh, I remember uh, he sent something else. Then I got Vinny, Vinny Maiulo, uh, to go to, to the first meeting with Ryan because uh, Ryan Brown is the general manager there and said, you know, Ryan, you know, what do you think? And he said, well, you know, pencil it out and we'll go from there. And so the next meeting, which was a while, uh, maybe six months, six months later, went into Michael Gunn's office. And he talked about someone who makes a decision. Walked in, Michael, here it is. You know, this is going to cost you money. We have to build a studio. You know, we think with Brent Musburger's name. Uh, well, $900,000 is what the, uh, that studio costs. Remember taking 50 slot machines out. There's a huge office underneath the, the, the studio there. Uh, but if you would get to Michael Gaughan, he said it to me a dozen times over the years. He said it was the best 900000 I spent only because the, 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 the 
the reflection we get from that studio and all the great guys, including you, they're just simply talking about the gambling aspect of it. It's been an absolute skyrocket. And as now you know, uh, the circle downtown with the great kid Derek Stevens is running it. So uh, I feel very fortunate and I feel really good about, you know, being a part of that way back when. So to answer your question, how, there's not an owner in the world or a corporate place in the world where you go, go in, make your statement within 15 minutes. He points to you and says, it's a done deal. Wow. It's pretty strong. That's yeah. unbelievable hearing that. That's it's so great. Yeah. Um, let, let's finish up. Last question here, Jim, for you. South Point Sportsbook's been known to run sports betting specials like reduced juice or certain events uh, on, on, on certain events. You guys, even the first sports book to open up March Madness. And when I say that, um, <laughs> you've actually opened it up for like $10,000 bets before a single sports book in the world opens it up. Going forward, are we going to see those type of things down the line here? Well, first of all, let's call it like it is, Bill. You know, who knows what the freak's going to happen in the next few months. Right. If we get n- close to normal, we will definitely do it again. Now, we'll, we'll, uh, it, would Derek Stevens want to do it this year because now he has his own sports book? We'll pick somebody else out to do that, you know, uh, whatever limits we put up. That was an absolute monster. You know, every once in a while, when I, I have fun twisting or tweeting, whatever the hell you want to call it, and uh, uh, the following has just been incredible. There are times when I post things with uh, I try to uh, I try to weave the gambling with some, some stories that go with it too. If it's a big big deal, if like something comes over, then I'll make my comments and we'll I'll flash it on the Twitter screen. I have gotten upwards of 150,000 people reply to that, answering that question. Unbelievable, which shows you gambling is still in an embryo stage across this country. Now, if we get back to normal, that one more quick thing, the only thing, and forget the pandemic that we're in, like let's go back to the previous couple of years. The only thing that's never, ever, ever, ever reduced was the handle for the state of Nevada every year. Not that it goes up 20%, but it never goes backward. And now with the other states chiming in, as long as you run your book and you're being fair, you know, you'll get your share of business. The only thing I think that would ever hurt Las Vegas books would be if California uh, would chime in. But obviously that uh, that's 10 years away. So that's how I feel about the industry. It's done well for me. I like to hang around for a while because I, I just do nothing but go to the spa and answer questions. Oh, you're great, Jim. Really appreciate you joining John and I in Wisecracks and uh, look forward to see you in there. Oh, man, that was good stuff. What a legend. I could li- I could literally listen to him tell stories for days. Oh, man. Uh, we have so many more questions for him, but uh, we only have so much time. So yeah. I know. Crack, we're almost we need a four hour show. So uh, creeping up, we're creeping up on the end here. So let me let me get to this week's pick. Um, crack, I might need intervention. I'm just going to be honest with you. OK, when it comes to this week's picks, um, it's that parlay addiction that I suffer from. You know, I see a plus three uh, plus three fifty money line and my brain instantly starts creating a path to victory. <laughs> so with that said, Jacksonville versus the Vikings, I can't help it. Let's be honest. The Vikings aren't all that and a bag of chips. And sooner or later, the, you know what I think about the law of averages crack, it kicks in. So I'm taking the Jackson money line on this one. What are your thoughts? I hope you're right about this because I, I need Minnesota to go under their season wins. I bet under Minnesota, under Denver earlier in this in the, uh, season win. So I hope you're right about that. Uh, and listen, these big dog money lines aren't coming through that much like they were in seasons past. So uh, due to uh, cash one of these, John, I'm rooting for you, buddy. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Let's talk about our home team here. The Raiders uh, going to play the Jets. Uh, you remember how I said a couple of weeks ago, uh, the Jets are going to win one game this year and I'm going to find it. Um, yeah. This is not going to be the week that it's going to happen. The Raiders oh. are going to bounce back from last week's uh, tragic performance. And uh, I'm taking the Raiders to stomp the Jets and I'll give the points, whatever it is. I think it's eight, maybe. Yeah, you see how every – like I say, I know it's, I'm, a, I'm a broken record when I say any given Sunday, anything can happen. Well, I mean, look what happened last week. The Raiders, three-point favorite, uh, get destroyed. Maybe the one of the worst <laughs> beats of the year for any team. I think it's the terrible. final was 43 to 6. Yep. Just yep. ridiculous. That It just shows you that what can happen in the NFL. This team just hung with the Kansas City Chiefs, almost won. They – beat the Chiefs a couple weeks prior to that. Now they can't handle Atlanta? I mean, and they get blown away like this? So, listen, I I, I understand your uh, Jets are uh, probably going to be the team that might be picked on here. And, again, 
Um, I don't really do NFL sides, but I, I would probably lean to your side. So I'm rooting for you there. Fantastic. Okay. And my uh, last game is giving me my street cred uh, game. I don't know if I get a lot of street cred for this one. Saints at Falcons. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, it's that money line thing. Intervention crack. Help me. Uh, I'm going with the Falcons money line on this one. I think they got a little bit of momentum from last week and the Saints, uh, you know, without Drew Brees, it's a different, uh, it's a different ball game. Although their quarterback's done pretty good. Yes. Yes, he did. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I'll just tell you, I have to uh, probably tend to agree with you again. I didn't bet it, but, uh, you know, I always tell you if I'm against something, too. After that Falcons victory last week, they uh, they, they may have some uh, playoff uh, hopes in their in their future. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a little bit more than just winning this game. But, uh, yeah, so I, I'm going to root for you here, too. And hopefully uh, you could, like you said here, I know uh, – and we were talking earlier about these parlays. You'll probably parlay all three together. So a hundred percent, but I'm going to take them all each individually too, because okay, good. Good uh, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning crack. All um, right. Let's uh, let's, we, we, we skipped out on our Twitter questions uh, the last week. Uh, so let's, let's get some Twitter questions in this week. Um, we've got a couple good ones for you. Uh, we've got one from one comes from at Giambi 999. I wonder if he's related to uh, either Jason or uh-huh. Jeremy. So yeah. my, my favorite brothers ever to play major league baseball. Uh, let's see at Giambi 999 says, how many caps do you have and how do you keep them so clean crack? What's the well, secret? Uh, the secret is just buying them. But however, <laughs> no, I will tell you, uh, I did a show years ago on ESPN called Cold Pizza in the morning. I remember it. Remember the show? Okay. So uh, Kangle seen me on there, got a hold of someone on ESPN. ESPN got a hold of me. They sent me a box of a, a dozen different ones. And the box they sent me, though, they didn't realize I'm not going to wear the pinks, the red. They sent me pink, red, green, blue. I mean, I, right here on my left here, I have about nine of them. They're all darker ones. There's brown, blue. Two black ones, two blue ones, two gray ones. So I do have uh, some, some, uh, you know, there, and I keep them in a rotation. And and yeah, they're pretty easy to keep clean. Uh, you know, I kind of, I don't throw them in the washer or anything. But if I feel they get old, I just do it. I just, I throw them in the in the bin with my old sneakers and stuff, and give them all away. So. I thought you were going to give me a Jerry Lewis answer, like, uh, and tell me that you never wear the same cap twice. Remember, he was like that with socks. Did you ever right. hear that old story? Right. Jerry, right. Jerry right. never, supposedly, never wore the same pair of socks twice. He, he had a lot of eccentric ways. Absolutely right. <laughs> no, I wear them over. All right. All right. Uh, next question comes from Ideas Squared. Uh, he asked, which sport or sports is the most profitable for you? And is there more advantage in college football with larger spreads where you see less parity compared to NFL teams? Good question. This year has been un- a little bit unusual, whereas uh, the NFL has been my go-to thing for betting on proposition bets. I would say proposition bets probably are the most profitable uh, for me. But uh, when you talk about college football, this college football season was very different with uh, all the COVID regulations in effect. And it was just a different type, type of season. It wasn't the big profitable season. I thought, that I'm used to in, in college football. I'm hoping I'm going to get that in college basketball. So uh, the larger spreads kind of don't mean anything to me. You know, maybe I'll tell you this. Here's a secret. I am more profitable on smaller spreads in college basketball than the larger spreads. So the games that are actually like minus one and a half or plus one and a half, plus two, plus three, I am more profitable on those games uh, than I am taking 22 points against somebody or they're taking a large amount of points. So it just, uh, it's a couple percent, no big deal. I'm still profitable on all of them long term. Why is that? Do you think, do you, do you know? I think that sometimes at the end, these teams just give up some of these big teams that are just down there and maybe ah. the scrub, maybe they're putting scrubs in uh, just to give them some playing time. They know they're getting blown away. There could be a, many different uh, reasons actually there uh, compared to teams going very hard when they're a one or two point favorite and the games are playing closer to the number. So, uh, but a lot of times, those teams where you're taking plus seven or plus eight or plus nine, they're the ones that bother me the most losing because it's all about fouls in the end. They're down by four. They get their fouling they're down by six, down by eight, down by nine. And meanwhile, you covered 90% of the game, 95% of the game, or maybe even covered the entire game until that last foul. So uh, those are the ones that bother me the most, but yeah. So thanks for your question. 
And keep the questions coming, guys. Just hit us up on Twitter or in the YouTube section on the comments section, wherever you find us on social media. You can hit me up directly or a crack, whoever you want. Uh, and we will try to answer those questions for you next week and, and following after that as well. Crack, I want to remind everyone, uh, it's, I, know, I know how you feel about it, but I kind of brag on you, man. The Crack Wins app, it's been a game changer for me. I'm, I'm, this might be the first full NFL season where I am in the black because of you, buddy. Uh, and I just want to remind everyone, go check out the app. It's got all of the information you need. The guy updates the app all the time. It is that combo of WSN.com and the Crack Wins app is going to make you a winner today. Check it out. It's on Google. It's on Apple. Do it now. What an exacto that is. Crack Wins app, WSN. Check them out, guys. Thank you. Right? Well, um, I don't know what to say, man. It's that time again. I, I get a little sad. You know, I look forward to these shows and they go by too quick for me. But uh, the good news is we get to do it again next week. And uh, again, uh, a, a closing statement for me, like I said, that exacta, uh, very interesting to go to WSN and seeing those bonuses because, you know, John, just let's close the show with this. There's some bonuses on there that I could in New Jersey from the WSN app uh, from the WS. I'm sorry, from the from WSN. There's a couple bonuses on there that you cannot get anywhere else. I notice them on there. There's a $500 sign up bonus at William Hill that it's only $50 if you go anywhere else. But for some reason, WSN, you get $500. So that's just one. So that's a big difference. Yes. All right. Well, check it out, people. And we will check you out next week on Wisecracks. Cracks.